created and the jobs that are being created are also being chipped away by technology. So you've got this really Pandora box and this perfect storm of some really cataclysmic events that are kind of crazy because it's like as technology goes on, things get better. You know, we do we do better. We get become more efficient, but it's stop knocking people out the workforce. So the answer in my mind and, you know, this is just my opinion. You need to do an inventory of your personal skill sets, your personal desires, your life path, your goal and figure out a different plan where you can create a business or service to serve a lot of people. And when I say a lot of people, a few hundred to a few thousand or well, a few hundred can give you a great livable income. A few thousand can make you a millionaire. If you want to learn how to thrive in the disruptive economy, enroll in Hustlers University today. Hit that green bar and you'll be good to go. I'm sitting here watching CBS Sunday morning. And uh, wow, this is, I've had this a long time. It's a little ratty. And they're talking about raising the minimum wage. And I'm looking at it and I'm looking at it the stories of a woman, Chicago, eight bucks an hour. She's been in that situation for the last 10 years. She's got two kids. She's trying to make it on a thousand dollars a month in Chicago. Wow. I feel for her. I really, really do. I'm looking at what people fail to realize. Because they show the gap where, well not a gap, but a graph where income really stalled and the thought was a lot of industries no longer have unions to make this happen. There's a piece of the puzzle that is missing. You will be paid based on how easy it is to replace you. DC tried to punk out Walmart. Walmart said, uh, we won't finish building these stores. DC mayor vetoed it, the uh, bill to uh, have Walmart raise their minimum wage. And those stores got built because in the grander scheme of things, six Walmarts in the area contribute greatly to the economy because they provide jobs. I mean, it's just, there's such a spillover effect. But I just decided to do this video because people are not really understanding. Going back to the larger point, your pay is determined primarily based on how easy it is to replace you. The easier it is to replace you, the lower your pay will be. And I sit back and like I said, I'm trying to be compassionate here because I know it's 2013 and many people think the recession over is over. It's not. <laughs> it is not. Uh, we're in the midst of the holiday seasons and you will see certain things that just happen every year. Someone's house burns down Christmas Eve, Thanksgiving. I've already seen a few of those fires and many people will be laid off. And there's this new thing this disruptive economy that's happening that people are not really keying in on. You can be educated. You can have a PhD. I was watching some videos this morning and there were people in Silicon Valley, workers 48, 50 something, well credentialed, did all the right things. I talked about this before. And they are in that same position as this woman who makes eight bucks an hour. They're in the same position. This new economy is no joke. But on raising minimum wage, this is where I'm going to get called a Republican. Based on what I know about creating your own economy, building your own business, it's a bad idea because the golden rule is he who, ha who has the gold makes the rules. It's never going to change. So what's going to happen if these companies are forced to increase the minimum wage? 
They're going to pull it out of some other place. They, you know, money is going to flow from one cost center to another. There's something's going to happen and it's not going to be good. It will force these companies to be more efficient. It will force these companies to do more with less. So the actual converse of what's desired is more money for more workers will be more money for a smaller pool of workers. Because that's what's going on. Because many people who are making these policies have never ever run a business and that is the big big problem that is a huge problem because when you had a business you had payroll you've had to deal with all kinds of stuff code enforcement you have a different outlook on this stuff and that's why i can speak this way about it because i've been on both sides of the table i've been that less you know, i mean i've been that 525 hour worker uh, working at labor force labor ready these places that you go in the morning at 4.30 and you sit there and hope that someone, you hope to get chose to go out to get some money. I did that shit for two years. It was not fun. So that's what I'm saying. I'm being a little bit more compassionate because I know what it's like to work your ass off. And at the end of the week, you might have $120 after, you know, 120 180. That is, is horrible. But the other side is, you have free will and choice. So, it, it's like, once again, this personal responsibility thing comes up. Like, one of the biggest reasons that I see that a lot of people are in poverty is they have no skill sets before they have kids. Because... If you're an attorney, a single woman, you're an attorney, you're making seventy to two hundred and fifty thousand a year, and you have a child, it's gonna be challenging. But it's gonna be a totally different ball game between you and that place versus this woman who makes eight bucks an hour. It's a totally different ball game. Yes, the only thing you have in common is you both have children and no husband. That's it. After the net, <laughs> it's it's over because. That uh, attorney who may be a single mother makes more money than mo many couples. So that creates a really interesting scenario. So that that's another thing I see. Like um, when I had my, my kids, I was young, but I had a skill set that in the middle of a recession, I was able to get not one, but two jobs, a full-time job and a part-time job. So it goes back to skill sets. And it goes back to ownership of your life because I, I'm, I'm sitting here and I know people who are doing really really poorly and I know people who are doing fantastic and it comes down to mindset preparation and you know I'm speaking to you as someone with no degree someone who grew up in a single parent household have all that pathology and for Except for about a three-year period, I was able to get out of that. You know, I don't count the part, you know, in high school, you're a kid. I don't count that. But as my adult life, it was this three-year really janky period that forced me to look at myself and the choices that I made. And that's really where it starts. Because if you're trying to get out of that cycle, you're going to have to do something differently. You're going to have to gain different skill sets. And it's on you because what's happening with this massive, massive debt burden the government has, it's going to be impossible going forward to maintain social safety nets and programs as we have them today. And they've already been drastically cut. They're going to get cut some more because with the disruptive economy, this is what's happening. Listen to me. You will have some kid. In his basement, who's going to create a new technology or something that's going to disrupt the workforce. And when I say that is you have Joe, the executive at his desk tomorrow morning, and he's doing fine. He's making good money. He's got money saved. He's maxing out the 401k. And this kid's going to create some technology, something that's going to matriculate and disrupt Joe at some point in the future. And then Joe's going to find himself just like these people. And he's just going to be scratching his head like, what the hell happened? I saved money. I wasn't frivolous. 
I have not a, only a degree, I have a graduate degree. I'm supposed to be insulated from this stuff, but I'm not. And that's where a lot of people are like scratching their head because this is the reality of what we're going through because I'm here to tell you and there's a guy if, I'm not going to say his name because he's a highly regarded person in his field if I can get him to do a spree cast with me I will because he studies this you have what I'm going to call optimum jobs or highly desired jobs in proportion to our population growth they're drastically shrinking there's not enough we're being you know more people are being born quicker than these jobs can be created and the jobs that are being created are also being chipped away by technology so you've got this really pandora box and this perfect storm of some really cataclysmic events that are kind of crazy because it's like as technology goes on things get better you know we do we do better we get become more efficient but it's stop knocking people out the workforce so the answer in my mind and you know this is just my opinion you need to do an inventory of your personal skill sets your personal desires your life path your goal and figure out a different plan where you can create a business or service to serve a lot of people and when i say a lot of people a few hundred to a few thousand well a few hundred can give you a great livable income a few thousand can make you a millionaire so Think in those terms because I see this push and push back and once again, he who has the gold makes the rules. There's not going to be a lot of traction for the McDonald's and the Walmarts to go ahead and decimate <laughs> their profit margins to give people these big raises to do the job they're already doing with no additional value or benefit coming from that raise. It makes no sense metrically for any it makes no sense it makes no sense at all and I'm, like i said i'm looking at this uh one of the reasons that i created hustler university and a lot of people don't understand that because i came on youtube as the storage auction guy and it wasn't so much the storage auction stuff that helped make me successful it was a mindset that i developed during those three years when I was in the Antarctica of poverty, the Antarctica of adult personal poverty, that shit, it, it, it blow, it fucks with your mentality, man. It, it messes with your self-esteem. You don't feel worthy. You're, you're depressed. So I, I know what that's about, but I'm glad I went through it because it prepared me for what's coming. Change, change. The people who have these, uh, low skill low wage jobs they're going to be more of those <clears throat> excuse me they're going to be many many more of those kind of jobs there, there will be a lot more of those jobs way more because we've gone from a manufacturing nation in the united states we were innovators manufacturers we just put stuff out in the world we we exported cars machinery technology ideology and stuff and now we're, we're just consumers we're just consumers and service oriented for the long haul and in that is opportunity because if you become a producer or a creator even on a small level you can significantly change your life you i'm i've, I've got people in the group that have done it i've got a guy who Three years in the storage auction game, he hit six figures in uh, personal income. To me, that's fantastic. You, you, have, you have the ability, and really, when you want to look for heroes, go to any immigrant dense neighborhood in your locale and just drive around and you'll see what they did. It's like, okay, I don't speak English. I'm new to this country, but guess what? I got to eat. Uh, I can't get a job. I can create one. I have this saying that when you know I've got problems to solve, and it's it's racist, but you know it's it's racist in the way that people don't mind when you say it, because it's like you know people take the positive racist comments very well, like you know black folks and the big dick and Jewish people are super smart and rich. you know they're like yeah yeah we're gonna take that one, but the other stuff we don't want. I go in Asian mode when I am trying to solve problems. In Asian mode is working my ass off and not 
being in the point of, I hope to be smart, is I can make myself smarter. Asian kids feel that if they don't understand the, pr the problem, the coursework, in their mind is I'm not working hard enough, not the chips are stacked against me, I need to know some, it's a matter of will working hard to get to that point and that's Asian mode. And that's what mode that I went into whenever I had a serious, serious problem. That's what you gotta go into. You can't solve these problems of, you know, you're not making the money you want by the same level of thinking that created that situation you got to think differently you got to you got to elevate your thinking because i'm saying this because there are going to be many many more people who are going to be find themselves in this position i mean i just it's like i don't even have a crystal ball it's just the dots are so big you could just see it because of the narrative of what it takes to be successful in the united states of america I mean, the old path still works for a group of people. I met a guy at a holiday party. He's a mechanical engineer. He went to school, but he was a smart guy. He used a whole scholarship. Went to a highly regarded school, graduated, got a job with no student loan debt. That's a win for someone else who's not so smart, who's going to spend eighty to one hundred and fifty thousand. And the other problem is, when you go for those job interviews, your GPA for certain jobs that's going to count. Yeah, yeah, it's going to count. So it's almost like if you're not getting a scholarship, maybe you need to pull away from that and step back and up your intellect for that that job. Because that stuff is really, really important. It's really, really important if you're going to go the traditional way of success, which is going to school getting a degree and entering into the workforce. You have to be super smart for that to work because I was talking to him and his, he recently got married and uh, she's an attorney and uh, we we're just talking and I was like, yeah, I, you know, all attorneys don't make a lot. He's, he's like, man, <laughs> I thought attorneys made a lot of money. He's like, I make way more than she does. STEM based education, science, technology, engineering, medical, STEM, STEM, you know, and it, it's just a big, big thing. So if you find yourself in one of these situations where you have to uh, make some changes, my advice to you would be sell everything. I know it's going to sound really, really crazy. Do take personal accounting of everything in your house and everything that you absolutely don't need. Get rid of it. Sell it. Get yourself a roommate. Move in with a parent, but don't move in just for free. Just come. It's like, look, I got a plan. I'm selling everything and, you know, get yourself new training start a business and devote yourself to that like a hundred percent no dating no I, i'm telling you what i did when i was in the antarctica uh no dating no hanging out it's just 100 percent blinders boom because that's the way a lot of really successful companies are created and you have to think of yourself as a company and you have to think of yourself as an enterprise and these things that you have to do that will help you become more successful because I was pulling up a bunch of videos on you here on YouTube 2010 2011 2012 I'm seeing the same kind of videos the economy is only getting better for a group of people and that's for folks who are looking at this thing totally differently than you are if you're struggling if you're really, really struggling. And when I say struggling, if you're building a company and it's not going exactly like you want it to, that's to me is a good struggle because you're engaged. But if you're at home, you know, you hanging out every weekend, every time you get a little money, first thing you do is you go get drunk, you buy clothes. I'll, I'll tell you a quick story of something that was totally asinine to me. 
His name was Jay or Jabbar. I'll just, no one ever know. His name was Jabbar. We were both living in this boarding house. And at one point, I had access to a car before I wrecked it. <laughs> so I took him. Now we're living in the boarding house. Both of us living in the boarding house. And I took him to the mall. And dude was making his last payment on a $1,500 Pele Pele leather jacket. I bullshit you not. And I just looked at him. I was like, dude, we live in a boarding house. Why are you buying a $1,500 jacket? And he said, when I step out, nobody know I'm in a boarding house. And with this, I'm going kind of, to get all kind of bitches. <laughs> yep. <I'm... sighs> yeah, I mean, I get a little sad when I think about that. That $1,500 would have bought him a car. It would buy him a car. Fifteen hundred bucks will get you a car today. No, it may not be what you want, but it, you know it's a point A to point B type ride. You know, get you situated. And that that's kind of that mentality. You know, we used to sit around and people used to talk about how uh, things weren't going well, and I just start looking at personal behaviors. Like that, I mean, that I will never forget that. I just thought that was the most egregious misappropriation of funds on earth for him in his situation. And sometimes he was late on his room rent. <laughs> I was just like, damn. But if you're doing that type of stuff and you're wondering why your life isn't getting any better, that is the reason. That's it. You, you got to peel this stuff away because for radical change, it's going to take radical action. And, you know, a lot of people try to do what I call, I want to maintain my current lifestyle, but I want to experience remarkable and extraordinary results in other areas of my life. But I'm holding on to this car or these two cars or these three cars. And I've got this gym membership that I, to a gym I don't go to. And I've got like, you know, a $200, $300 cell phone bill on top of a $200, $300 cable satellite bill. When you look at your communications and technology bill and you don't have a business, if you have a business, I see that working. You know, 200 bucks for your cell phone bill because you got two or three phones, your technology, I, I see that. But if that's just for personal entertainment, and I'll give you the math. Say you make forty-five thousand a year, right? Your cell phone bill is two hundred dollars. Your cable bill is two. That's four hundred dollars, right? No, it's not four hundred dollars. No, it's not four hundred dollars. It's five thousand dollars a year. That's one eighth of your gross, not your take home. That's your gross. So you at forty-five. I'm thinking. You're going to bring home maybe 36, 38. So that's one sixth of your take home pay on those two things. It adds up. It really adds up because when I do consulting, I talk to people and I, I love that because I ask better questions because, you know, just to like let you know, if you sent me a question like, hey, Glendon, how could you help me do X, Y, Z, and you don't hear from me? It's because it's a consult, it's a paid consult question. Because if it's six, seven, eight, nine paragraphs, that's going to take me an hour or two just to really give you a great answer. And that great answer is only good to a point because I don't know you. I don't know your weaknesses. I don't know your strengths. I don't know your work. I have no clue. So it's really only like half an answer. So hour, two hours to give you half an answer. And since I don't know you, it's probably not the recommendations will not be followed because I'm operating in the blind. It's really a waste of my time and it doesn't help you. So that's why I ignore them. <laughs> I actually, you know, I think a lot of people will actually get that because the thing is, everyone is in this different place and there's no magic jelly bean cookie color so cookie cutter solution that works for everyone because even with like a proven concept like mcdonald's 
there are some McDonald's franchisees that don't do well and McDonald's shh, takes it away. And that's a proven, very methodological, we dot all the I's, we cross the T's, and we put a border around everything process. And there are still people that do not do well. And it goes back to the management and it goes back to that person. It's not the process. It's not the system. It's that this person may or may not have the capacity or the tools to really work that system. So understand what's going forward, what's happening. If you're not scared, you need to be scared. You need to be thinking, how can I get ahead of the big penis in the sky? Google it. You'll find the video. There's two of them. <laughs> All right. That's just my thoughts is on, you know, hiking the minimum wage and the disruptive rant because I see these stories and they're only giving you like half of the information and I cannot criticize you for coming away with a certain response when you don't have all of the information. It's hard to ask a question that you don't know that you should ask when you don't have the information. And that's, that's what a lot of this stuff does. A lot of people don't even know that there should be other questions asked. I'll, I'll give you a real good example. Like you sign a book contract back in the day, they would like not give you your you know, foreign distribution rights. And they're just like, it wasn't even in the con. It's like, oh yeah, you signed other way. Because as a new writer, you're just happy to be in the room and you don't know that you should ask what about foreign distribution? Uh, is there a cut? What's going to happen? You don't even know. So you don't ask the question. And it's not like it's like you, you did get screwed, but you got screwed by two, two penises. Uh, ignorance. And that's how the game is played. So sometimes you can't make the best decision you can make because you don't even know the right questions to ask which goes back to getting more information, paying attention, and stop being a slave to your creature comforts. You, you really gotta look at this from a broader context. So that's the deal. Just something to chew on, something to think about. In mere weeks, this year is gonna be over and you're gonna see more disruption, more change in 2014. So either you can be driving the vehicle of change or you could have tire tracks on your back those are your two choices that's it that is really it all right this is glendon and i'll see you on the good side